Japan's Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency has made public a large portion of a Tokyo Electric Power Company's procedural manual for nuclear accidents. The documents show that the operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant had not made sufficient preparations for a critical accident. The 200 pages of documents released Monday relate to the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The March 11th tsunami took out almost all electricity sources for the plant's reactors, flooding the batteries and power supply boards. The documents reveal that TEPCO did not prepare for such a power failure or any kind of prolonged power loss. It assumed that emergency power sources would be available in the event of a serious incident. TEPCO had earlier submitted the documents to the lower house with most of the contents blacked out. The company insisted the information had to be kept secret to protect its intellectual property rights. It also claimed that disclosure could open its facilities to terrorist attack. But the Nuclear Safety Agency ordered TEPCO to resubmit the manuals without the red actions. We decided to make the manual public because transparency is necessary to find the cause of the Fukushima nuclear accident. Still in Japan, a panel of experts has stressed the need for nuclear power plants to have multiple power sources to ensure a supply of electricity in emergencies. Six nuclear energy experts make up the panel organized by the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency. The panel, which met for the first time on Monday, will discuss lessons to be learned from the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. You should arrange to receive emergency power supplies from other utilities in addition to installing multiple power sources. Fuel and three reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi plant melted down after the installation of lost uh, power in the immediate aftermath of the March 11th earthquake and tsunami. The experts stated that operator TEPCO should examine why the equipment failed to work and take measures to prevent a recurrence. They also called for the emergency agency to present documents on the accident that are easy for the general public to understand. The panel will submit a report in March that it is hoped will provide a blueprint for Japan's new nuclear safety agency to be launched in April. Some news here in Japan. Well, debate is heating up on whether this country should participate in talks on the TPP free trade deal that will take place in early November as part of an APAC meeting. Both those opposed to the deal and supporters presented their case on the government on Monday. Many in the agricultural sector are opposed to participation on the grounds that the Trans-Pacific Partnership deal could damage Japanese farmers. The leader of the Central Union of Agricultural Cooperatives, Akira Banzai, expressed his group's opposition in a meeting with Chief Cabinet Secretary Osamu Fujimura. Banzai said the union collected nearly 12 million signatures from people who oppose Japanese participation in the talks. He warned that the TPP will undermine Japan's agricultural sector and urged the government to refrain from taking part. Fujimura replied that the government is still canvassing opinion and will hear from various groups. Meanwhile, the head of the country's main business lobby pressed the government to join in the TPP negotiations. Japan Business Federation Chairman Hiromasa Yonekura told Foreign Minister Koichiro Genba that Japan needs to promote high-level economic cooperation with other countries. He said joining the TPP will not hurt the Japanese industry. Yonekura added that Japan has no time to waste. Participants in the talks aim to reach a general agreement at the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum. For his part, Gamba noted that details on the nature of any final deal will be available only to those taking part in the talks. He emphasized that the government will soon have to make a major decision. あの、その、
日本人として避けたい避けてほしいことですえっ、ー、と国民の、まあ、毎日そうやって苦労しながらあの子供を育てている人々の,あの税金によって思,う思,わ思わぬ被害を海外に子供たちに与えてしまうかもしれないようなことっていうのは絶対にしてほしくないと思いますやっぱり困ってる子どもたちが食べるんですよね子どもこの困ってる子どもたち貧しい子どもたちが食べるんですよ、はい、何をですかこの真っ赤になったところで取れた魚サンマねサバ一番真っ赤なところにいるやつ魚ですよそれをさわざわざそういう子どもに食べさせて日本のイメージが良くなると思いますか僕は一番それが問題だと思いますよ、外務省にとっては。あのこの子たちはそれは知らないかもしれない。でも、この子たちは知らなくたって、国際社会は見てます。あんなところで取れた魚を、いや、もう出っちゃったよってことに、みんな気がつきますよ。そ,こはどう思いますかそこはあのご要望がない国に対しては。いや、ご要望じゃなくて、はい、なんでお金がなければ、食べるのが先でしょう。Citizens, groups, and local governments in the Tokyo metropolitan area have been finding pockets of high radiation since the Fukushima nuclear accident. The science ministry has launched a telephone hotline to receive their radiation reports and advise them on decontamination. Expert, There are few experts who say such a thing. It is probably because you won't stay there around the clock. A hot spot is a place where you pass by and are exposed to radiation. But even if exposed, given that there are few places with a radiation level of 20 millisievert per year, experts say you don't need to worry much about direct impact on your body. What the fuck? The Environment Ministry will start tracking the billions of tons of debris drifting in the Pacific Ocean ever since the March 11th disaster. The ministry says it will analyze satellite photos as well as wind and wave data to simulate likely routes of the floating objects. Japan will provide information on the findings to countries likely to be affected. The United States and North Korea have begun a new round of direct talks on North's nuclear program. U.S. Special Envoy Stephen Bosworth and North Korean First Vice Foreign Minister Kim Kei Guan opened two days of meetings in Geneva on Monday. In the first direct talks involving the two countries since July, the United States is expected to urge North Korea to immediately halt its uranium enrichment activities and accept inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency. The U.S. side says these steps toward denuclearization are preconditions for resuming the six-party talks on the North's nuclear program, which have been stalled for nearly three years. North Korea argues that it is enriching uranium for use in nuclear power generation, so the country wants the six-party talks to be resumed without preconditions. The focus of interest in the latest talks will be on whether North Korea makes concessions to break the deadlock. On the 11th of March, 2011, an 8.9 magnitude earthquake struck off the coast of Japan's Honshu Island, triggering a devastating tsunami. Over 15,000 people lost their lives. This number could have been far higher had the disaster occurred in another country. Japan leads the world in earthquake preparation. Japanese engineers have spent decades perfecting techniques like shock absorbers and reinforced walls to minimize the damage of natural disasters. Japan's power plants have similar safeguards. The quake triggered automatic shutdowns for 11 of the country's nuclear reactors, including the Fukushima Daiichi power plant run by TEPCO, the Tokyo Electric Power Company. At first, it seemed there might be a stroke of good luck. Of the six reactors at the plant, three were already shut down for maintenance. Yet the quake cut the power station from the national grid, and the tsunami damaged the emergency generators. As the Japanese government scrambled to protect the people of Fukushima, TEPCO officials stated that no meltdown had occurred, and they were working around the clock to minimize the damage. Not everyone believed them, and those skeptics turned out to be correct. Here's where it gets crazy.
Nuclear power plant mishaps are usually rated on a scale of 1 to 7, with 1 being the least severe and 7 being something on the level of Chernobyl. Initially, the Fukushima disaster was rated a 4, and TEPCO officials claimed there was no meltdown. Yet, according to reporters from The Independent, the meltdown was already occurring as TEPCO released this statement. The earthquake knocked out the plant's power, and the tsunami washed out the backup generators soon after. Without a continual source of cooling, the waters surrounding the nuclear fuel rods began to boil away. The metal tubes holding uranium fuel pellets overheated and cracked. When the water reached the fuel pellets, it triggered a process called thermolysis. The water grew so hot that it broke down into hydrogen and oxygen. This volatile hydrogen gas needed to be vented, but venting too quickly caused an explosion on March 12th. By the 15th of March, two more explosions had occurred. If the water continued to boil away, then a meltdown was surely imminent. By April 11th, nuclear regulators raised the severity level to a 7, ranking it on par with Chernobyl. Today, there is no doubt that this disaster will affect Japan for decades to come. Yet, numerous individuals, including some former and current TEPCO employees, believe the reactor wasn't safe to begin with. Nine days before the meltdown, Japan's Nuclear Industrial Safety Agency warned TEPCO of failures to perform critical inspections. Earlier in 2002, TEPCO admitted to covering up data about cracks in circulation pipes, which siphon heat from the reactors. In the months following the disaster, TEPCO TEPCO admitted that a massive fuel melt occurred 16 hours after the loss of coolant, still several hours before the initial hydrogen explosion. In crisis scenarios, incorrect information can often get spread accidentally. However, in this case, it appears disinformation may have been spread intentionally, or at least the truth was downplayed. As of 2011, numerous questions remain about the events leading up to the meltdown and the extent of the remaining damage and contamination. Will the public learn the answers to these questions? What is the extent of the damage to Fukushima? What does this disaster mean for similar nuclear power plants around the globe? For now, it appears these answers are something they don't want you to know.